Saint Narsi Mehta belongs to Savarashtra, Gujarat. His grandfather was Purushottam Pandya, father Krishna Das and uncle Parvat Das. All were devotees of Krishna. The family belonged to Junagadh. The family had a legacy of devotion to Lord Krishna. Basically, Narsi was a thinker and his attitude towards life was that of non-attachment. He was insulted by a member of the family and he was totally depressed. On the same night, he left home and that was the turning point of his life. He performed severe penance in the Shiva temple in a forest and he was blessed with Sagun Darshan of his deity. The deity asked him, What do you want? His response was very unusual. He said, Give whatever you want. He received talent as his blessing and gift. Inspired by the worship of Krishna and Shiva, he started writing poems. His devotional poems made him famous. Now even his family accepted him. He got married and he was blessed with a son and a daughter. Throughout this period, he was filled with devotion and bhajan kirtan. His devotional literature was noticed by his relatives. The then society despised him like all other saints. However, Narsi was in his own world of devotion and dedication. Once, a few wicked villagers decided to make a fool of him. They sent a stranger, a traveler to him. The evil intention did not affect Narsi. He helped the stranger. But the stranger decided to play a prank to deceive Narsiji. But Narsiji was so pure-minded that the apparent plan did not succeed. Aichi Kharipur, his famous composition, also caused him trouble. Yet, Narsiji was very quiet and peaceful. He was beyond both praise and criticism. Among many stories about his tolerance and devotion, one about the last rites of his father is very famous. He was penniless. He left home in the morning with the determination to offer homage to his father. Being a person of high self-respect and being ready for hard work, he never asked anything from anyone. A person offered him some amount and ordered to perform a kirtan in return. He accepted the offer. He was determined to reach and attain God through his kirtan. He got a lot of arms and he was able to fulfill his duty as a son. One has to concentrate while working with all skill put to the test. One should not expect anything in return. Such work raises the standard of our life. It also results in satisfaction, peace and happiness. This was his advice. If we remember and practice it, what a pleasant, wonderful life we will have. He composed many poems full of serene thoughts. Through his devotional autobiographical compositions and mythological stories, he expressed his views on dharma, justice, equality and ethics, knowledge and devotion. His poems were full of all nine rasas. He had gentle and sensitive mind which made his compositions easily liked and recited by people. Vaishnava jan to tene kahiye Je peed par aai jane re This is a very popular bhajan written by him. It teaches us to lead our life meaningfully. One who understands sorrow of others can share their sorrow too. One should do good deeds, but should not have ego. Life should be without greed and deceit. We should use our hands to donate. Finally, let us see an incident in his life. His daughter, Kuver Bai, was adventurous. She had arranged a religious ceremony. Many were invited and well received and accommodated. But Narsi was poor, so he and his wife were accommodated in the cow shed. Narsi could feel the derogatory glances of people. One of them asked Narsi about it. He gave an exemplary reply. 
my friend krishna is very kind he loves cows so they have bestowed a great fortune on me cows are pious and give us milk to empower us to strengthen us to be in their company is to be like in the company of lord krishna these thoughts made the person feel embarrassed even today these thoughts make us have positive attitude about any situation in short one has to think whether the glass is half empty or half full these saints provide a wealth of thoughts we just have to pick them and behave accordingly we can lead a useful and prosperous life moral of the story our deeds are a true reflection of our identity